Now we will look at the items we need to calculate our profitability. So we call these our pores, which stands for P is price, A is actual dimensions, W is weight, and S stands for SKU or SKU. Let me explain each of these briefly for you, and then I will show you how to create your product SKU, as this is something that we must create internally, rather than receive it from our supplier, like price, actual dimensions, and weight. Let's begin with pricing. So the price that we're going to use is the price that the factory has quoted for us for their MOQ. MOQ stands for minimum order quantity. This is the minimum order that we can place with our supplier at a particular price. Note that you may have to pay a slightly higher cost if you want to order below MOQ. This isn't always the case, but it can be when the supplier is not going to move the goalposts to facilitate you. As a quick aside, when you're calculating profit, use the cost price that your supplier will charge you when you do order their MOQ. Of course, you will need to make sure that you're not losing money if you have to pay slightly more to get started with that supplier. The reason we use the future MOQ as opposed to the temporary price we must pay to get started is because that future price is what we will pay for the item in the long run, and that's what we're interested in. We understand that we may not be able to uh, be quite as profitable when we're starting out, and that's fine. Equally, we're aware that ordering below MOQ and paying slightly more is infinitely better than ordering at the full price only to find that the item didn't take off quite as well as we'd we hoped for, leaving us stuck with inventory that will take longer to sell out. Remember, you must calculate and express your product price in US dollars. If your supplier gives you your price in any other currency, we must convert that to US dollars using a site such as xe.com. As we discussed earlier, you'll receive your price as either an FOB or EXW. Go with whatever you receive for now, and I'll show you how to deal with this in the Google Sheet. Next, we want to receive what we call the actual dimensions of the product. This is the height and width of an individual sellable unit. In other words, we're not concerned with the size of a carton packed with multiple units of your product. We only need to know the size of an individual item for now. The dimensions must be expressed in centimetres. If you receive anything else, use Google to convert the size from whatever your supplier gives you back into centimetres. For quick reference, if you're given dimensions in metres, simply multiply each number by 100. If given in inches, multiply by 2.54. Also, calculate the product size tier within Amazon. This is Amazon's classification of the size of your product in their FBA system. The size of your product will affect how much you pay to store and ship the item with Amazon. Let's take a look at how to classify your item with the dimensions you've received. As you can see here in this list, each number relates to the centimetre size of the product. The size then dictates how Amazon will ship the item out. As you can see on the first line, if a product is less than or equal to 23 centimetres by 15.5 centimetres by 0 0.5 four centimeters, then this would fall under the small letter size tier within Amazon. Most products will fall, fall into the last four categories on the previous list. For now, grab your dimensions and see where your item sits. Next, the weight of your item must be expressed in kilograms. If you receive the weight back in grams, convert this to kilograms by taking the weight and dividing it by 1000. For instance, 700 grams equals 0.7 kilograms. Now, if you are given the weight in pounds, multiply it by 0 0.45. For example, 2 pounds equals 0 0.9 kilograms. Again, this is the weight for one packaged product, in other words, for one sellable unit. Now, when we ship to Amazon and they ship your item out to the customer, Amazon will add some weight to the individual packaged unit weight before they send the item out. We must account for this. In case you're wondering how to do that, don't worry because I've got you covered. You see, the total weight of our item once Amazon adds its packaging to it is determined by the product size tier that we determined when we looked at actual dimensions of the product. In simple terms, if your item was classified as a small envelope due to the dimensions of your product, we know that the weight of a small envelope within Amazon's system is 20 grams. We'll then take the weight of the individual item that our supplier gave us and add 20 grams to that weight to get the total packaged weight of an individual item that's ready to be sent out to a customer. This total weight figure is the one that we must place in the Google Sheet when we're calculating our profitability. Finally, you're going to create a SKU for each of your items. A SKU is a stock keeping unit, which is basically just a unique code that we create for each product. 
It's an internal code that we use to quickly identify a product. SKUs become more and more important as your business grows, as it becomes a logistical nightmare if you refer to items only by a short description. The good news is that SKUs follow an identical pattern and take just minutes to create. We use a formula to create the SKU that goes like this. First, we take the product type and display that as abbreviated letters. Next, we take the style and express that as a set of abbreviated letters. Then we take the size or volume and display as digits. Then we take the colors or finish of the item and express as abbreviated letters. And finally, we take the quantity or pack size and express as digits. Now, all of these are optional apart from product type. This is simply how we create our SKUs and how we suggest you do. You can, of course, leave out certain elements other than product type that aren't relevant to your product. For instance, let's say your product isn't a pack size. Well, then there's no need to enter that element as it's irrelevant. Before I show you how to actually make a SKU, note that SKUs aren't something to get hung up on. They're just a way of managing and cataloguing your products. Keep them simple and move on. Okay, so let's imagine that our product type is a pool rake. We would then use the abbreviation PLR to display the product type. Let's imagine that the product style is that it's an adjustable pool rake. In this case, we'd use the abbreviation ADJ to mark that feature. Next, Let's imagine that a big, a big feature of the product is that when built, it's six foot in length. We'd mark that feature with the number six. Now let's say that both the colors and quantity weren't relevant here. We'd simply not mark down anything for these features. So we end up with a skew that reads like this, PLR-ADJ-6. We can clearly see that whenever we're bringing through these skews, we can learn a lot about the item just by looking at the code. Let's look at another example. As you can see, the difference here is that we've marked that this item is blue in color and is actually sold as a two pack. In this case, we'd mark down both the color and quantity or pack size and adjust that skew to become PLR-ADJ-6-BL-2. We'd note the color if we had intentions to do multiple colors in this range. Now it's important to be careful when you're creating colors as some colors will begin with the same letter. For example, blue, black, and brown. In this case, you can instead use two letters, for example, BL, BK, or BR. This system clearly denotes the colors and makes it consistent and easy to understand for you. Now that you understand everything you require, simply collate all PAWS or PAWS together before putting them into the Google Sheet. You will need each one of them to complete this part. All that's left is to take a look at how to do this in the Google Sheet using all the pores we've collected. Let's take a look at how to do it. 